Yeah. There she goes. Go, Lisa. I'm putting this on Facebook. <laughs> wow. All right. As the world becomes more globalized, discussion about the logical flows of information and ideas abound. Eric Ma, however, addresses the topic from a different angle. He proposes there are three flows of space. Global to local, a process in which a stable set of spatial practices travel across borders and reproduces spaces transnationally. Local to global, noticeable in tourism where the local culture is recreated for global consumption. The last one is local to local. It means local incorporation of spatial practices from faraway sites. Emotional energy and translocal symbols will be reconstructed through placemaking processes in a localized world. Globalized youth culture provides unique examples of placemaking by a subcultural group seeking to find its place in the world. Youth culture is technically defined as people between the ages of 16 to 24, but in the theoretical sense, the term is broader and more ambiguous. Youth typically associate with greater agency, unemployment, avid consumption of cultural phenomenon, and different styles of behavior and dress. The rapid globalization of urbanization, media, and flows of wealth have facilitated the growth of a truly global youth culture. Because of the high consumption of media and pop culture phenomena, some scholars from the Frankfurt School associate this global youth culture with capitalistic mass society or cultural industry. Yet other scholars point out that youth culture's use of cultural borrowing and cultural jamming is a resistance of modern mass society. Throughout its history, once the aspects of youth culture were commercialized, the cultural members moved on to new things. At its core, youth culture is focused on the creation of identity, the challenging of authority, and the making of a place for expression. Among the various forms of expression, graffiti was quickly adopted by youth as a way to create place and simultaneously challenge authority. It's actually this why graffiti is quite often related to young people. Mm -hmm. It's a very young people attitude. Mm -hmm. I like it, I want to do it. That's it. I know you're not supposed to do it, but I should do it. Things like that. The people who who involved in the game is still like less than twenty. I'm not. I'm I'm not a hardworking student, actually. Yeah. So I don't I don't really care about my study. I just want to, you know, I just want to uh, do the, the thing I want. So um, I. I try like skateboarding, I try like uh, dancing. So I feel ah uh, it's good. It's, it, it's all about it's all about you know when uh, when you are young, mm -hmm. you know you want just want to oh I want to explore with you know you know you want to do something really cool huh? Hong Kong is a highly regulated, clean, almost germaphobic international city. <laughs> It is not the place you would expect a lot of graffiti. Different people may have different definitions of graffiti. In Hong Kong, some people, many people misunderstand about what is what is a graffiti and uh, and some other work like like doodling, yes, like uh, scribbling. They have different meaning mm -hmm. in English, mm -hmm. but in Chinese, it's all about tong mm -hmm. You know, they have the same definition. Graffiti is out uh, quite often things that mirror work quite commonly applied to it. They're done on the street, so there's some form of street art. 
Graffiti is always illegal. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, not graffiti. Mm -hmm. The intention of graffiti artists is to be subversive. They want to do something to someone else. Mm -hmm. So, it should not comply to any policy. So, <clears throat> if the government arranged some space for graffiti, that's not graffiti, just mm -hmm. pop it up. Graffiti is supposed to be subversive. It's supposed to define the law. Despite its illegal and often subversive nature, there is no shortage of graffiti in Hong Kong. Why are there so many graffiti in Hong Kong? And what are the artists trying to communicate? One of the earliest graffiti artists is the King of Kowloon, who literally blanketed all of Kowloon with his Chinese calligraphy style. Since his passing, his work has been commercialized on souvenirs like t-shirts and mugs, and by companies like G.O.D. Graffiti-style advertising companies have also begun to dot the Hong Kong city skyline. Another form of graffiti in Hong Kong can be seen as public art, such as the Pak Fu Lam Fire Dragon. Community members worked with graffiti artists to create an image of community identity. The Hong Kong government has also sponsored several murals in an attempt to bring dynamic, creativity, and color to the city. Yet neither of these forms explain the majority of graffiti in Hong Kong. Hong Kong graffiti primarily is an expression of the city's youth culture. The city's graffiti scene pulls heavily from the popularized New York style. No one knows who initiated the modern graffiti movement, but we know who made it popular. T-A-K-I-183. There are three levels of graffiti painting, tagging, throw up, and peace. Graffiti often clusters together in a type of conversation co-created by artists. A second international influence on Hong Kong graffiti is the Japanese youth underground. It's, more, it's just more innovative, I guess, for Hong Kong, because like, you yeah. see uh, all the bars look, look the same. Yeah. So we try to... Um, and then, you know, Central is more like a, like a businessman area, right? So we try to make it a bit twisted by adding some street dirty look to it, just, just, just to attract some special attention, I guess. While 60% of the world's youth are in Asia, the Western world maintains a greater influence upon youth culture. Yet Japan is one of the examples of Asian culture having significant international influence. There are some similarities between Japanese and Hong Kong youth. Both exist in a highly regulated society. Both are held to high educational and career expectations. And society reacts in a similar way to youth who buck the system. It's a global language. This global language relates a lot to the nature of graffiti. Graffiti is quite local. Mm -hmm. It's quite often related to a specific space. There's something rather site-specific about graffiti that gives it some, quite a strong local character. You know, it might not be the technique, it might be the content. 
the war is being used. Mm -hmm. But there is an international dimension of it because of, of the nature of the material. And the, you, know, you cannot do a really refined graffiti. Right? You have to do it real fast. It's big, you do it real fast. And that dictates certain stylistic artistic approach. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong has three distinct locations that fit into Ma's criteria of translocal space. Yuen Long, Mong Kok, and Central. It is within these firm boundaries that Hong Kong graffiti artists have formed translocal utopias where they can express themselves freely. You just have to hold it, you know, have to hold a spray can and do it at the night. You know, nothing, nothing, you know, it's, 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 it's very easy. Um, but if you want to, you know, get up, I mean, you have to do a lot of practice, you have to learn the technique, like how to spray a really clean and, uh, you know, we, yeah, we call it a clean line, you know, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to do a lot of practice. But um, I always call it, you know, female probation, you know, if you, if you can keep your passion for female, maybe you pass. You know, if you if you couldn't, you know, do it more than three months, maybe just a hobby. They are groups, but they're quite secret. Mm -hmm. It's only among themselves. But the fact is that once you start to get famous and do things like that, you're no longer graffiti because of its subversive nature. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I have not done deep research in it, but I know they are groups, but they're quite secretive mm -hmm. amongst themselves with their own language and each group know the other groups as well. More secluded places like Yuen Long and Mong Kok Lane offer chances for artists to come together to spend more time on larger pieces and co-collaborate pieces. Central and other more open locations require artists to hit and run. In these areas, practices like citywide tagging and tags in dangerous or unreachable spots can gain the artist's respect from his peers. I'm not a South Korea, but I'm a running man, running from the north. Probably the most widely spread ritual, however, is the game of cat and mouse with the police. I did it, I did it with my friend. And uh, we did it like two hours from two to four in the midnight, mm -hmm. all right? So um, I, uh, yeah, I still, I still very enjoy the moment. You know, it's, you know, it's secret. Is uh, you know you feel like an ominous, mm -hmm. so uh, it's always involved the you know the think the thinking of illegal. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's about it's all about illegal, but I don't think it's it's really serious for me because I'm not like killing somebody. I'm not you know robbing. I, I sometimes I have a joke with the student. If you don't follow my instruction, I will. I would call the police. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst the various pieces splashed on the streets of Hong Kong, several messages repeat themselves across locations. Youth tend to lead the challenges to society's traditional boundaries as they go through a complex and psychological transition while experimenting with identity formation. Challenges to authority vent their frustrations with the social reality and expectations while exploring spiritual elements show their efforts to address their feelings of depression or helplessness in the face of a domineering society. Sexualized images tend to take common elements of childhood like Hello Kitty and make them sexual or provocative. These pieces seem to explore this transition from childhood to adulthood. They take what society pushes on them as good and rejects it as no longer applying to them. See, in the States, the whole territorial ownership is very strong. In Hong Kong, we don't see too much of that. Uh, there are some artists, there's some political ones, but 
Still, even that story is strong, with the exception of every way I've not far from mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of them are just personal or artistic. Like international elements come from the mix of artists in Hong Kong. Almost half of all artists are foreigners who bring their own cultural references to the Hong Kong stage. It is unique that Japanese youth culture has such a strong influence among Hong Kong graffiti artists. Since the 1960s, Japanese pop culture has grown in popularity among Hong Kong locals. It has lent itself to the creation of a highly cartoonized style of graffiti and the adding of color to the city. So this is why you can see a lot of street art, you can see a lot of graffiti. It's like, sh it's about shout out. So they want to, you know, tell, they want to tell people, oh, we are here. So many people ask me, oh, graffiti, do you think graffiti is, is a trend? You know, I just have to say, mm, sure not, because it's a culture, it's a subculture. So. Despite the Western domination of graffiti, Japan seems to hold greater influence in the Hong Kong graffiti scene. Well, well our theme is Japanese um, sake bar. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah, so we, we tried to kind of fuse it into Hong Kong culture, so we put like the Hong Kong scenery, we have the Hollywood Road sign up there, but then the main features are more Japanese. You see the koi fish, you see the samurai, you see the geisha. I lived in Japan for a couple of years, and then uh, I, I visit a lot of um, underground street bars, and then it's just the, the, the atmosphere is very nice. So, uh, our investors, they seem to really enjoy uh, the urban street look of Japan, so we tried to create it as similar to an urban look as possible, like to Japan and underground bars and whatnot. Local artists also tend to incorporate local elements into the graffiti. Yeah, like the Chinese uh, character. Oh, Chinese character? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. to eat maybe some uh, Cantonese lamb as well. Mm -hmm. Graffiti in Hong Kong is not revolutionary. It just challenges the accepted authority. I mean, I mean we are well trained to be a, you know, following the, the, the rule, mm -hmm. the people who follow the rule. So we could, uh, if, if you step out, you get, you, you know, you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, um, you know, if you, if you want to go graffiti, you always have to step out. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's not, not easy. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to change the, the situation. Local graffiti is more playful. It is a game for local artists. So it's more personal and artistic. It's just, I want to okay. say something. Okay. It's still about telling the world, this is my territory, this mm -hmm. is my group. We just want to like beautify the, the, the place. Uh, many people use graffiti as a kind of, uh, as a kind of, uh, um, you know, sending out some message. Like, uh, we want to maybe doing, uh, maybe, do a de decoration in, inside uh, a building, or it's about mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can see lots of people doing a uh, brand for themselves. So what is the future of graffiti in Hong Kong? Well, the graffiti painters will still do the same. You know, they find space and do their stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a problem with the government in terms of implementing. On the one hand, you talk about creative city, creative industry, cultural hub. On the other hand, you have all this highway department mm. taking down the public, public hub. That's enhanced the city. Mm. The local city has a cultural hub. So it's a policy problem. It's an operational problem. Only time can tell if the graffiti scene in Hong Kong will survive. In the meantime, there are plenty of beautiful and colorful pieces surrounding this wonderful international city. Tell them, my flow's twist like pasta. Give me one to confess, she seems to a pastor. Faster, blaster, could you mess with the masters? Let the game be ready for the disaster, you bastards. My passion is a fraction of the rap I'm attacking with the assassins back in action. The captain of the cabin, the attraction. Hate me, cause I've achieved what you haven't. Visual monument, indespicable condiment. Your habitual's incompetent. I got lyrical confidence, and I'm hated by enemies who got fake identities. I'm an alchemist, by the way, that I'm bending my camera.
industry, I'm invincible. You imbeciles for me, I'll be invisible. If rapping is the playground of the school, I am the principal. Then hang in the stein, you better comprehend your fools. Rules don't bend between the bend and the rules. Uh. Two, the pain goes high, five, all the good stuff, the two, Check it up all in the mouth, I'm gonna be go, but it's too long to die. Why the fool, I'm a dumb guy, I do a jolly team, I'll die. I'll be fine, 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 I'll be fine